Hello crafty friends, this is the Paper Chef here. In today's Brother Scan and Cut Tips and Tricks tutorial, you're going to learn how to cut out and layer stamped sentiments. The stamped sentiments we'll be cutting out are from the new Good Feelings stamp set by Stampin' Up. It'll be available to customers on May 3rd. The reason I have it, it's the only thing I have actually from the new catalog, except unless something is carrying over, I should say. The reason I have it is I had just attended this past week, I attended a on tour event and it was a virtual event. And as part of the event, they sent us all the demonstrators, an annual catalog and a stamp set. So we were able to get one of four stamp sets. They told me they were sending me this stamp set and I was excited because I love this kind of mixed font. I love when things are really big and I, I just, I just love this. And so I was so glad to get that as part of my event. And then during the event, they showed us different things, they, different examples of projects they do with new, new things in the catalog. So I'm excited. So let's do this. Let's, let's start by, this is for my layering. I'm going to start by doing some stamping. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the machine and I'm using the STX-125, but you can follow along with whichever model of scan and cut you have. All right, hello. I see you guys coming in. Thank you for joining me. In honor of some retiring ink colors, we'll use this little mat here to stamp onto it. These are some of the colors that won't be around after May 3rd. All these five colors are retiring. So I've already put this one on a, I'll show you how to mount a stamp, but I've already put this one on a stamping black. We're gonna, we're gonna ink it up with Memento Black. Memento black ink. When you have a stamping, when you have a stamp that's this big, you have to turn it upside down to, let me just go ahead and turn my camera side. You have to turn it upside down and ink it this way. You could also put large stamps like this on a stamparatus. Okay, so now let's put, now let's stamp. And I, I would normally put a little rubber mat under it. So let's see how this comes out. And if I, I, if it doesn't come out good, I'll put a silicone mat under it, but it's very big. So we'll see. Should, it should work out. Okay, good. Now this was already inked up, so normally I would I would stamp onto a sticky note. So I'll show you that technique as well. I'm just going to do two for good measure, and, and give you, some, and then I can give you some tips and tricks, different ways to do things. All right, so let's put that one there. Now, if you're new to my channel, I have a lot of stuff going on in my channel. I always show. Stampin' Up! products because I'm a U.S. Stampin' Up! demonstrator. I always show scan and cut tutorials. I always every month show paper pumpkin project videos. I have an Ink It Up! series with stamping techniques. I have lots of different workshop series on our projects. So there's lots of stuff going on on my channel, so please check it out. And subscribe if you're new because there's lots of crafty goodness. Now, the reason I did two of these was because I'm going to give you two tips and tricks, two ways to cut out stamped images. So let's go ahead and do a couple of the thank yous and then for this one, I'm going to show you the whole, what I would do from, like, this was already inked up, right? So what I'm going to do now is show you right out of the box. Like, say you would take a stamp out of the box, right? And now I'm not going to cut these because these are, these are big. These are the three. I've worked with the Hip Hip Hooray already and the Thank You in this one. I haven't played with these two yet because they're kind of ones that I might not use this technique for because... I can easily put those into a square shape or into a, into a, like a sort of an, a rectangle shape, right? These ones I wanted the sort of the, the feeling of going around them here. In fact, this is what we're doing just to kind of give you an idea, but stick around of course till the end, because that's when I show you projects that I created using these techniques. So we're kind of doing that sort of outline. Now what I want to do next is the thank you. So I want to show you, so you take it out of the, first you'd put it on the, I'm just going to show you this just for the just for the fact that some of you are new to stamping. So if you if you get a new stamp set, you peel this part off, right? And then you would put you would mount it. I'm not doing this one right now, but I'm just saying I'm just showing you how. Then you peel this part off, and then you would take this part and you would then mount it on there. So it's called a cling stamp, and then you have sticky on both sides. Okay, so you put it like that. And then you have sticky on both sides and you can put it on your stamping blocks, etc. Okay, but we're not going to do that one. We're going to do the thank you. I just wanted to show you because I've already put the sticker on the thank you. And then you can throw out all these little pieces. All right, so now that you have a sticker on the thank you. Now for this one, I'm going to do it the right way. 
just to show you. So the right way meaning I like to put a silicone mat under, under it when I stamp. So now you're going to take your stamping block and you're going to, this is the sticky side up and you're going to put it like that. You're going to mount it onto your stamping block like that. Okay. Now it's still kind of big, so I'm going to, I'd rather ink it that way. Right. And then I'm just going to, I'm just going to get a sticky note and just see if I have good ink coverage or I could use the mat underneath. It doesn't matter. Okay. And so that the reason the other one had good ink coverage and I didn't need to do this is because I had already inked it up earlier. I had already worked with that stamp. So this one, I'm just going to get a little bit of ink on it. Right, I think I got enough ink on it. I had already inked that other one up earlier. I've been, I've been playing with projects like this for a while. Then you're just going to put it onto your basic white cardstock like that, like so. Hold it for a few seconds and you're good to go. Okay, let's do a couple of these again just to show you different techniques. All right. Now, I think a good way to teach this is just to work with the thank you first. The thank yous. And then you'll understand the concepts, right? And then after that, we'll work with this other one. So, but we have them all stamped now. So then I can change my camera angle and leave it like that. Again, if you're trying to look for the good feeling stamp set, you're like, you can't find it. That's because it's not available yet. And I usually don't do tutorials on things that aren't available, but you know what? I like to do tutorials on whatever I'm working on. And this is just happens to be what I'm working on. And of course you'll be, and my tutorials are what's called evergreen, meaning they will be around for a long time and they're always relevant. I've been teaching scan and cut tips and tricks like this for years now, many years. And I've, I've shown this with the same kind of thing with all kinds of stamp sets. I'm just kind of making sure that sticks. I don't want to rub over the stamp itself, but I want to make sure that sticks. Normally I would put tape on here to help it stick, but the problem is you can't cover up when you're doing scanning, you can't cover up these registration marks. All right. So now let me change my camera angle and let's just get to it. So we have the, you're going to see the screen and you're going to see pattern and scan, right? Let me go ahead and zoom in a little bit. You're going to turn on your machine. And when you see this, you're going to select scan. Okay. And then, um, before, before I show you what to do, I need to show you what, what not to do. All right. It's just my teaching method. You're going to say direct cut and you're going to store it to your machine. Okay. And let's just, this is just asking what size area you want to scan. And we're going to scan 12 by six. Now it's not going to recognize these as one object right now. It's going to be a hot mess, but the, I'm doing this on purpose to show you how to fix the hot mess because you're not going to understand why you need to fix it until you see what is actually happening when it tries to scan in these objects. So here's what it did. It scanned them in and let's go ahead and zoom all the way in. So what we have here is it's great. It, if you just wanted to cut out the words as separate lines. So it, it scanned in the thank in the you, and you would, you would be cutting right along the line and you'd have kind of like a lot of, and then even the period would be cut out separately. Okay. And if I can zoom in anymore, it would even be, no, I can't zoom in anymore to show you all of these little things will be cut along lines. You'd have this big shredded mess because this isn't good cardstock to do that with. It'd be better to do that in vinyl, but you still wouldn't even use this method for vinyl. You would never do this. I mean, this would not be something you would do. Even if you're like, well, I like cutting along the lines. It's just going to be a big old hot mess if you try to cut along the lines. And just, if you're going to do something like that, get an SVG file, get your own font and do it a different way. Don't use stamped images. Stamped images are meant for cards and for cutting out for other purposes, but don't, don't try to cut along the lines directly. Now for this kind of project, what you want to do though, is take your pencil. This is, this is a trick now, and you're going to make this one object. I'm filling in the gaps. Okay. See what I'm doing? I'm filling in the gaps. And now it's going to cut all along here and here and here and out there and inside there a little bit and down and around. And it might even go down toward the H. So if you don't want it to go all the way down toward the H, well, I do, I do want it to go inside there. That's fine. But then it, like, if you want it to go sort of around this one, it'll go sort of down and around the H and around. So now you have one object. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and do it. We're going to just use the pencil trick. That's the first trick I'm showing you for this. See, I'm just enclosing these. Actually, I didn't really even need to enclose the K because it's already enclosed. So it, it is fine if I do or don't, because it's really going to probably just go around there. So now we have, so what I did is I just made these one object. Now let's go ahead and do this again. Okay. Same method. We're going to go 
Okay, we're going to say scan, direct cut. This is temporary storage. Where, does he, where do you want to store it? To your machine. We're storing it on the machine and we're selecting the 12 by 6 area as opposed to the 12 by 12 because all of the objects are on the top of my mat. So we want to select the 12 by 6. We're going to click start and now these should scan in as one object. I'm zoomed in, so I hope you got to see my pencil marks okay. I wasn't looking at the camera at the time. All right, so now we're going to click OK, and now we're going to zoom in again, and I'm going to show you. Zoom in again. Now, these, these are one, but let me, it might be better if I just do that, and then we'll zoom in. So what we're going to do is we're going to, this got selected as one little object, one little blob. You can sort of see it, but when I put in, when I put an outline distance of 0 0.04 around it, you can really see now that this is one shape. Now I'm going to zoom in and show you that. Okay. Actually, not yet. I have to go back. Let me go back to the edit mode. Edit, zoom in, and I need to show you now. See, that's one shape. We're cutting right around it. And the reason you want the outline distance, you want a little bit of white area around your letters. If not, it's going to try to cut on the line. Now, this is very important. Look what happened to this side. A big, old, hot, hot tamale mess. This is a hot mess. Look at all these separate objects. I'm selecting them with my mouse, with my stylus. Look at these. One object, one object. Look at these. We didn't do the pencil trick. We didn't do the, t the tape trick I'm going to show you. It's a big hot mess. So let's go back. We're not going to cut them like that or we'll have this big mess. So instead we're going to go and we're just going to, so we're going to go and make a selection. So I'm just going to get a little, actually we'll use this one. We'll use this one. We're going to make a little selection using, and we could have done this earlier. We're just going to, let's go back. Selection. Select this. I just want to select only those. I don't want to cut that hot mess over there. All right. It's still going to do that one. We'll get rid of that one in a minute. All right. I think I just need to go back. I think I need to do it back here. Sorry. Back here. When you get back, when you go, go very back to the beginning before you preview and then make your selection. Okay. And so Basically, I might need to put that outline distance around again. Now I'm just working with this side of the screen right now. We'll work with that side of the screen later. So make sure at the beginning of this, you make your selection. I'll show you that again later. Yes, I do need to put that little outline distance of 0 0.04 around it. Don't worry, we're going to do the whole thing again when we work with these two objects. But right now I'm showing you how to cut out the thank you sentiment. All right, so anyway, after we get the 0 0.04 outline distance, we're going to select cut and we're going to select start and we're going to very quickly cut out the thank you sentiments okay now at this point if you i'm if you want to add tape you can i'm just giving it a rub because i hate how these mats are not very sticky and i just find that it's easier just to rub it or i could also just use tape I dropped my, let me find this stylus I dropped. Okay, so what happened is, let me zoom back out. Zoom in back out. So what happened is we cut the sentiments, okay? Just going to lift that up. These cut out as one piece. That's what we want. Let me put these on a different background. Let me put this over here for a moment so you can see that. See that? We'll get the, I'm just going to lift that up. You can use your little spatula. Okay, and then, of course, you want to get rid of your eraser marks. I have a link to the electric eraser because my scan and cut user group was just asking me. As soon as I did the video on how to align the machine in that group, they were like, where's... Of course, they didn't ask me anything about the tutorial. They said, where did you get your eraser? So my friend sent this to me from Canada. I also use the white erasers. In other words, don't use the red eraser on the back of your pencil because that'll leave streak marks. I'm just using this eraser. So anyway, you can, it's linked. Feel free to use that link. All right. Voila. Voila, voila. Okay, so because the tutorial is cutting out and layering stamp sentiments, we'll talk about layering in a little bit, but you get the idea. Okay? That's how to do, how to cut out your stamped image. 
It's looking pretty cool and it'll look even cooler once we layer it. We don't need to, we don't need to layer it now. We need to do some more work on this. We'll layer this one. Okay. So now, now that you know how to use what we're going to call the pencil trick, I'm going to show you now how to do the pencil trick and another trick. We're going to do one trick with this way and one trick with that way. So let me go ahead and tilt this down and tighten up my camera a little bit. Okay. Where's the little... I guess it's not going to tighten up. All right, sorry. Sorry, my camera's floppy. So we'll have to zoom in instead. What I'm going to do now is show you the pencil trick on this large image. And I'm just going to go around and do what I would do like I just did with this one. And if anything's not making sense, let me know. If you want the images to go, let me find that sample I had in the video. So you see how I just had it going sort of like in a little bit on the edge? If I want to, I can make it, I can make it go it's just going in right there because I just went like that. It depends on where you connect this. This You have to enclose the outside, but I, I kind of enclosed it in a loose way, like here to here maybe, right? I want it to go in a little bit, but I don't want it to go like all the way in to the G, right? So it just, wherever you're outlining is gonna be the outline of the whole shape. So each time you do this, it's gonna look a little different. So let's see. I definitely want to connect that eye, so I want to enclose the eye so it's part of that. And if you want it to go inside there, you can, but maybe connect these two a little bit like that. So you see what I'm doing. I've made this one object now. That's how to cut a stamp sentiment. But there's an easier way, and let's use, I'm going to now teach you, this is the, called the pencil trick. I do lots of tips and tricks on my channel here. This next trick is called the washi tape trick. So this washi tape trick is you're just going to take tape and sort of, oh, and put it, um, get, use your, see, put it on your clothes, get some, make sure this tape is not very sticky. So like get, you know, use it as a lint remover on your clothes so that you're not like going to rip your paper later. But you could do something like this, right? So you have washi tape, which is already low tack tape. And then I'm also, so not only is it low tack tape, but I'm also sort of just, I'm just sort of, you putting a lot of lint on it too. So it's low tack and I'm putting lint on it. And then you can sort of just do this. So this is in lieu of the pencil trick. Right? But you still want the you want some curves around the edges so it looks kind of natural. So don't just go putting don't just go put washi tape in a square. Because if you're gonna put a square, you could have just used a die cut, right? Like you could have just cut a shape or used one of our stitch shapes. The whole point of this is to get the curves to go around. So maybe you even want to take tape off a little bit in the sides and sort of curve it around like that. Okay, just so it's not so, here, just so it's not so bold. So it'll, it should curve because it has all those curves. If I didn't get it all, it'll tell me, the machine will tell me. It'll say, hey, I mean, it won't actually talk to me and tell me, but yeah, I'm going to kind of go in like that one for this one. All right. Now I have one full shape, hopefully. And if not, we will find out what happens. All right, so let's see. Let's do it again. We're going to click OK. We're going to go home. Scan, right? Back to scan, direct cut. Save it to your machine and press start. Oops, hold on. Whoa. See what happened. Don't panic, guys. Let me just zoom out and show you what happened. A lot of times this happens to me, the edge of my... Well... Let's just start out by saying the mats are not very sticky, okay? So they're just not. And we have videos. I mean, we meaning this channel, my friends, you know, let's just, let's just do this. I'm just going to get a big old piece of paper and chop that piece off. It, these, these aren't very sticky, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use some painter's tape. Or washi tape to, hold, to help stick this in place. So it just happens, it just happens when you're using this mat, things pop up. So I know, put that back down there. It hasn't scanned in yet, so you still don't want to cover those registration marks, right? But you can put painter's tape or washi tape on this part. I'll just use, I'll just use the washi tape in absence of painter's tape. I had painter's tape a little a couple minutes ago. There we go. So hopefully this doesn't come up again. But that's the reason I like to, if you, ever, if you ever see me in my tutorials, like using this side of the machine all the time. 
So we're just going to do it again. Direct cut and start. I'm always using this side of the machine because things don't get caught up in there for me on that side as they do on the other side. It'll all be worth it, trust me. I love doing this and I've already made like 11 projects in just one day. So, well, I didn't make them all in one day, but I made parts of them. I did all the sentiments today, but I did parts of them in other days. We're gonna click okay and see what happened. Okay, let's see if the, we're gonna make a selection on this part, right? And I don't know if it fully enclosed. It might, may or may not have. So we're just gonna ignore object size. To, I'm gonna ignore any small objects on the mat. And then if I have to, I might have to, Oh, you know what? You know, it didn't get, the one on the right worked fine, but this one didn't work because you see that? I'm missing a pencil mark and that's my fault. My fault right there, missing a pencil mark. So of course that one didn't scan. So we're just gonna go back, scan. And that was my fault for not enclosing it all, but that, I didn't do it on purpose, but it's a good teaching method to show you the wrong way to do something. So anyway, hopefully you'll see what I'm talking about. It'll recognize it now as one shape. The one on the right was already recognized as one shape. So the washi tape worked. So anyway, now we'll click OK, and you're going you're gonna to see. Now it's one big object. This one almost worked. I don't know if it fully worked, but. So first we're going to say ignore object size. We'll get rid of any stray bits on the mat. And this one, this one worked OK. I'm not sure about that one yet. I have to put an outline around it to see if it actually worked. Put an outline. Yes, 0 .04. It worked. So what happens is. When you put an outline distance around something, if there was little parts that didn't really, uh, they were, there was little parts selected in the inside a little bit, but you ignored them. And then when you put that outline distance, it's forgiving then. It gets the whole outline of everything you're trying to cut out and it works out better. So the washi tape is not as smooth as the pencil trick, but it works fine. The washi tape trick works fine. And I think it's gonna be a lot easier, especially if you don't have a good eraser, to use the washi tape trick. If you have a good eraser, you're going to get lots better results with the curves on your pencil trick. But either way, we'll show you both and then we'll layer it. So we're going to go full circle here. All right, now I can say hi while it's doing this. And this one's not too, uh, too loud as the other machines are. Hi, Barbara. Nice to see you again. And Gloria. Okay, Barbara Munn is saying hers was uniquely artistic. I like that stamp set. And in fact, that wasn't part of the pre-order, so... The uniquely artistic, so I can't wait to to get that one. I'm actually going to get that. I don't really like flowers that much, but I mean, I in that case, it's more of like the work of art you can make with it. Hi, Brooke. Hi, Dini. Is I hope that's how you say it from Belgium, Dini. And Denise, and Kathy from New York. Hello, and Susie from Illinois, and Yvonne, and Susan. All right, cool, and. Yeah, Gloria's saying she put some snail tape on the back of her paper to get it to stick on the mat. Yes, that's a good, that's a good point. I do that too sometimes. I, I use snail adhesive to get, sometimes I use adhesive to get things to stick to the mat. Let's say okay. Now, very important, two things are very important now. We're going to work with this what's on the mat. But be, what I want you to not do, I need to, and hi Brooke, I need you to not remove the mat, okay? Don't, re, don't mess with the screen yet and don't remove the mat. You're going to be tempted to. Because you're like, oh, I'm all done cutting. Let's, let's, let's remove the mat. But don't touch that screen. Okay, here's what we're going to do. This is so cool. You're just going to love this. All right, we're going to take this off. And we're done with this. We can remove the paper, but not the mat. Um, I tend to not reuse washi tape because it does stick. Now, this is one I didn't use. I didn't put lint on my clothes. And you see how our basic white paper is kind of fibrous? And the washi tape kind of stuck to it. Now, hopefully... It doesn't stick to this one because I did use this one as a little lint remover and it's it should keep my stamps really nice but if it rips it it's only ink right that's what the great thing is it's only ink it doesn't matter we are not ever gonna cry over crafts you just do another one so get, don't reuse these because they'll get stuck in your machine but if they do get stuck in your machine I have a video and search for scanning plate and people keep asking me for my videos and I have to search for them just like you can. So just search for them and you're going to search for scanning, how to clean the scanning plate. So when, when you guys keep asking me, do you have a video on how to clean the scanning plate? 
and then I, I have to go on YouTube and search for how to clean the scanning plate, and then I find my own video. So you can do the same search I can. I need to index my videos in some kind of fort fashion. That would be really nice to index them. But all I do is do a search, and they're all on YouTube. I have several hundred videos, maybe, maybe 600, 700 videos, and I would say probably 400 are on the scan and cut. So there's lots of stuff to search for. All right, here's what we're going to do. We're going to take these off with a little spatula. Beautiful. We'll show you the result, and then we'll make the layers. We'll do the next step in making the layers. Pretty cool, right? We'll go ahead and we can even go ahead and do the erasing part. But guess what? We don't have to do any erasing because we used washi tape. We don't have to do any erasing on that side. But this one has erasers. Eraser marks. My little, it's battery operated. It's getting low. All right, I think I got them all. So then that's what I use my extra, I do use my extra little wads of tape for. Let's see. Yep, there's a little mark there. All right, and there's a little extra mark there. Good enough. Now, I'm going to take my extra washi tape, and I will get my eraser pieces off because I don't want to get them stuck to the machine. All right, so... This one is better as far as it's smoother because I used a pencil. This one is not as smooth because I used a, I used the washi tape. We can always cut in there later, but then we'd have to cut into the extra layer too, but I'm fine. I'm happy with both of these. So let's move this and let's do this. We're going to take a piece of limited edition. This is not going to be in the annual catalog, the paper I'm showing you. It is called waves of the ocean it is for a limited time we have this paper and it's going to go with the waves of inspiration this paper is so cool waves of the ocean it's going to go with the waves of inspiration um, stamp bundle which is in the annual catalog and it's my next workshop series so if you subscribe to my newsletter then you're going to get a link and you can sign up for the workshop kit coming up for the waves of the ocean. But right now I'm still working on the Hello Beautiful, but you'll be able to get the waves of the ocean kit this month until about the 18th of April until supplies last. Anyway, I have some of this paper already hoarded for you in those kits, as well as the foils, which are no longer available, as well as the rhinestones, which are no longer available. Now, I'm putting this on here. Okay, I'm just putting this waves of the ocean on here. And now I'm gonna go back here and I'm showing you how to layer. You could use black card stack for what I'm about to show you. It doesn't matter. You can use anything, even just paper that you're going to color yourself. To, to make a layer, and when I say layer, I'm talking about this. This is a layer. This, is a, this one here is a 0 0.04 outline distance. This is a layer. Okay, this is a layer. That's what I, so you're going to learn how to layer by going backwards, right, and going into this little outline distance and clicking on 0 0.08 this time, you're gonna get a bigger little blob around your sentiment. I call it like a blob, because it's like a blob shape. 0 0.08, okay, one more time. 0 0.04 was the outline distance close to the stamped image, 0 0.08. I'm just gonna go back and do that one more time. See, outline distance, 0 0.08, that's your layer. That's very important, because if you cut out two of the same shape, and then I'm gonna okay, say cut again, if you cut out two of the same shape, you're going to be like, why are they exactly the same? They're not layering. Okay, and then I'm just going to give it a rub while it's doing it. Don't get your hands under there. While it's cutting, I'm just doing a rub because I don't want my paper to come up and I didn't want to put any tape on it, so hopefully it, hopefully it doesn't slip. Slip sliding away. Yeah, you can spray removable adhesive, like the tacky spray. I've used the tack retack spray. I've re I've I've restuck my mats using two-way glue. I've done. You're welcome, Yvonne. I'm glad. And Yvonne, there's two Yvonnes. Yvonne, one Yvonne bears the same. 
Thank you for the tutorial. The other Yvonne's giving great tips and tricks on how to respray your mat. You can use like, there's this low tech fabric adhesive or stencil adhesive, I think it's called. Not fabric adhesive, there's, it's stencil adhesive, but it's low, it's low tech adhesive. Anyway, we're gonna open this up. We're, I mean, we're gonna take these off. These are our outlines. And we're going to put those on the ones that we just cut out. Now, before you adhere them together, make sure you, it's like a little puzzle. This one was the one we did the washi tape. See how that little round edge? that little straight edge, and that one goes with this one. See how nice that is? Now let's get that, let's move this machine again. Let's get these. Let's just kind of review this and get the mat. All right, we have these layers. And for this one, if you want to fix it and make it more of a curve, you can. But this one is already pretty curvy. so. I'm going to give you a couple more tips and tricks, don't worry. And then you have black, which shows up better. So what you have is this. You have that one. If you wanted to make it curved a little, because it does look a little kind of awkward, you might want to do something like that, right? Everything else is fine on that one, but maybe that little bit curving. Then after you cut the inside, you're just going to kind of trace around the outside. So sometimes I fix them because the washi tape trick tends to be a little bit straighter. So now I have a better curve. So now what you're going to do is you're going to take, we're going to take Daffodil Delight. We're going to open up the Daffodil Delight ink. Oh, we already determined that my, my tripod's not going to stay. All right, there we go. It's, it's staying. Please stay. Please stop tilting. I hope it stays. I'm not going to move my tripod. And what we're going to do is take this little mat here. And I'm going to show you how a couple ways to ink these up. And just another way to make your layers stand out. So we have a what's called a blending brush. And when you use your blending brush, you can dip into your ink or you can dip a, a, one of your stamping blocks into your ink, right? And then rub a little bit of blending, right? A little bit of ink on it. All right, so now I'm gonna tap on there, tap on the mat, and we're gonna do a circular motion. I'm gonna kinda go in there, circular motion around the edges, okay? This serves a couple purposes. It might get rid of like, maybe you had, maybe you had some pencil marks that you were trying to kinda cover up, and this might get rid of those if you kinda ink around the edges. Or maybe it just adds extra dimension, or maybe, Maybe this will help it contrast better with the background. Okay, so there's just a couple reasons you might want to ink around the outside of the edges. But most of my projects, I inked around the inside of the sentiment, not the outside, because I was trying to spread sunshine, so I was trying to get the, the yellow sort of to radiate from the Daffodil Delight, radiating outwards. All right, but this one, now we have a nice contrasting layered sentiment. Okay, with that little ink around the edges. And if you need any more, like this side could use a little more ink. Because Okay, so that's, that's one way to do it. And then you put your little, you know, dimensionals on there and what have you. Let's just um, make sure you, use, I'm just kind of reusing my dimension, my edges of my, not reusing, but using the edges of my dimensionals here. I, I use every scrap of these dimensionals. I definitely do. And you're going to layer up the sentiment. Oops. Was it going like this? Here. It was upside down. Okay, there you go. It's like a little puzzle. And then, of course, you could have made a point one, two outline distance, and you'd have a third layer. So you'd have, like, this is your second layer, and you can make a bigger piece and make a third layer. And you've probably seen me do that. All right, now, take, the, take this, this one here and... Another, another option is what I mostly was doing kept it, is inking in the middle because I was going for like sort of sunshine radiating look. Okay? So I was mostly doing that and leaving the outsides blank. So that's another way to ink it up. Okay? So that's another option. Or maybe this isn't contrasting enough. Maybe you wanted to ink up the edges of your designer series paper so that contrasts a little better so that it's not white on white. So here are just the different ways to ink up things so that they contrast better. I'm just using, and plus I'm using up the rest of my ink. 
So you might be like, well, why does Daffodil Delight go with... It just does go with it. It's one of the coordinating colors. Daffodil Delight is one of the coordinating colors in the Waves of the Ocean paper. So that's kind of cool. So that's where, it, it, like, knowing the, knowing the paper I'm using and uh, knowing the coordinating colors and the paper I'm using helps me design all my projects. So in the Waves of the Ocean, the colors are Petal Pink and Calypso Coral and Coastal Cabana, Night of Navy, Pacific Point, and it's, it's what I use for my projects. And you're going to get to see that. So before I show you my projects, I need to remind you of two recent tutorials I did on the Scan and Cut so that these projects make even more sense of, of like how I use the Scan and Cut for the different aspects of my projects. Anyway, there's, that's how you do that one. And while I have some ink here, I'm just going to go ahead and finish these ones up, and then I'll be done. So this one, do I want an outer or an innie? We're going to do an innie. Make it colored in the inside. Okay, and then the next one I'll do, that one has a lot of ink, I should have tapped it off. And the next one I'll do an outer. I'm just using up all the ink on my blocks before I put them away. And the assembly line goes on, making things easier to read. And now I have more, and I've already made like 11 projects I'm gonna show you, and then I already have enough to make 11, I know, 12, 13, 14, 15, I'm gonna have 15 or 16 projects in no time. And this was all in one day. So with the scan and cut, you can make professional cards all in one day, very easily. All right, ready for this. So now, the other day I did something where I did a, a tutorial where I showed you how to make this. And it was, it was called a Canvas Workspace Tutorial. So it's not linked yet, so just search my channel for how to create sun rays, or just search my channel for Canvas Workspace. Because I showed you in Canvas Workspace how to take circles and triangles and create this. Now this is one I was using as a stencil. I made one as a stencil, but there was, there was also ones I just made for the cards themselves. And so that's where a lot of it's coming from that I'm about to show you. So we're going to start out with how I used the stencil that I showed you how to make with your scan and cut on the card projects. And then I'll, then I'll show you later another tutorial I did recently and show you how that relates to this. All right, so this, the, the reason this is so yellow is because I was using it as a stencil. So you can take a note card. This is our basic white note cards and envelopes. Create a very simple card by putting this on the card, on the note card, and just using the blending brush and the same technique I just showed you, you have some rays of the sun coming out, okay? And then I took the thank you sentiment and I put it right on there with a little bit of ink on the inside. Boom, with some little embellishments from my last month's paper pumpkin kit. And I have a card that'll go inside my paper pumpkin box, which I used the mini paper pumpkin box I did the stencil on the front of it, and I'm going to show you what's in the box of sunshine after I clean my hands a little bit. Okay? Later. I'll just, I'm going to make sure I just, I can clean it right now. So that's, these are two projects, and I'll show you inside the boxes in a little bit. All right, here's another box. And it's, it's again, just using that, that technique of layering. And this is a gold mini pizza box, which is on clearance right now. Okay, here's another gold mini pizza box on clearance. And uh, for like $2.60, I think you get eight or 10 boxes. I, I forget exactly how many. The, da the Daffodil Delight Ruchade, I hope that's how you say it, ribbon is on clearance right now for just a couple, like maybe $3 or something. This cute little Daffodil Delight ribbon. And it all goes together because they say it coordinates. I mean, the pack of paper is coordinating with your um, Waves of the Ocean paper. So I put for this gold mini pizza box, I put Waves of the Ocean paper on it. Then I added some bling bling. This, this bling, unfortunately, is already gone. It was a limited time only, and these are called. But I'll put them in my next kit, because I did hoard some. Rain, rhinestone Waves Basic Jewels. Yes, if you make the stencil in Mylar. Okay, so this blade will cut Mylar in the SDX 125, just so you know. This one, you may have to add, you may have to change your lever to a two. This lever, let me move the lever. When you cut Mylar with the SDX, see? This is, you might have to go to level two, and you don't need to use a deep cut blade, but when you use the SDX three, uh, CM, not, no, not SDX. SDX will cut mylar, and I have, just search my channel for cutting mylar with the scan and cut. I probably have 10, 10 or more tutorials on how to cut mylar with your scan and cut to make reusable stencils. Um, if you're using the CM model, though, you do need a deep cut blade. 
Not a separate mat or anything, just a deep cut blade. Anyway, the last thing about this project before I, I'm going to open it in a little bit. I'm going to grab a baby wipe before I show you. My, I, I need to get this ink off my hands. This, this little shape here is from the Beautiful Shapes dies, which I'm featuring in my current series on Hello Beautiful. So, and that's the Abstract Beauty Designer Series paper. So one second while I grab a baby wipe. All right. So yeah, you can, you can find all this stuff. So although, although you can't get the stamp set I'm showing you right now, you can still get the mini paper pumpkin boxes, which are retiring soon. You can still get th these on clearance, these gold mini p gold boxes. You can get the, the basic white note cards and envelopes. Mini paper pumpkin, you can get this ribbon on clearance. I mean, you can get this designer series paper. So I'm using loads and loads of products you can get. All right, now, the other day in my paper pumpkin video, I showed you how to make these guys. These are, so if you missed it, well, maybe I didn't show you my paper pumpkin video, but search my channel for sour cream container. And this is a, this is a giant sour cream container with some robin eggs inside for Easter and some fish from the seascape bundle, which is retiring soon with the sea life dyes that are retiring soon. So this is a layered sentiment. You can see the layers on there. Thank you with the little layers and the waves of the ocean paper with some candy inside. Okay, so that's another way to use the sentiments. Okay, now let me get out my bucket of crafty goodness here and show you some more projects. So I have here, this is the stencil again, using that stencil. I created Sending Sunshine and Good Feelings Your Way. And then I inked both the inside and the outside. I did the extra layers. This is a Coastal Cabana card base because Coastal Cabana was one of the colors and I told you it. Pacific Point was one of the colors. Um, let's see. Even Granny Apple Green is one of the colors that's inside these little gems. I didn't use green on these, but I did use the little green gems, the little rhinestones. So there's lots of colors in this one, this card, even though it's just plain on the back, it has lots of colors. And then I, then I took the Waves of the Ocean paper. And again, the reason I didn't make a Mylar stencil is because I wasn't really planning on using this as a stencil. I didn't know I was getting the stamp set. I ended up using the heck out of this and I used it like a lot of times and it hasn't fallen apart. But I typically would make stencils in Mylar. But what I was doing this tutorial for was creating for the scan and cut, this tutorial on how to make these sun rays was I was doing it to make these backgrounds, which is what I did. And I've already sent a lot of them out. So this is what I'm doing with the backgrounds. I'm just, you know, sending sunshine and good feelings your way. And then for, for these, this is petal pink. I just did a petal pink background and plain on the inside. I'll show you the inside of all of them because sometimes on the inside I, I put the designer series paper which I thought looked cool, like this, like there. I'm going to show you the insides because some of them have this. Isn't that cool looking? The petal pink on the inside. This is a Knight of Navy card with the, the waves and these have, this has an extra layer of designer series paper. So this is the piece of waves of the ocean and then you got your Daffodil Delight layer with the rays I cut with the scan and cut. And then you have another rectangle that's an eighth of an inch bigger. And then you have the card base itself. Yeah, with the inside. All right, now we have another one with is even more colorful. So it's just, it's just using that sort of coastal cabana background with the daffodil delight and the layers. And then you have Cal Calypso coral, which is one of the colors, which coordinates. And that's in this back here with a quarter inch. Sometimes I have an eighth inch layer on the outside and sometimes I have a quarter inch. Sometimes I did it vertically, sometimes I did it horizontally, the card layer. Sometimes I put the designer series paper on the inside. Okay, so Carolyn's asking how long the live, it's almost over Carolyn, but you can go back and watch it. it I'm almost, it's almost over. I have another couple fancy cards to show you. So um, this next one, I stepped it up even more. But thank you, Diana and um, Thank you for your comment. And Carolyn, yeah, go back and watch the beginning. All right, so now you can take, so that I think that Knight of Navy. Okay, now you can take the petal pink. You can, you can take what I taught you with the scan and cut, right? How to make these, you just go back and watch that tutorial if you missed it. It's called cutting out sun rays or something. It's called, it's called basically waves of the ocean, cutting out sun rays. I forget the exact name of the tutorial, but it was a Canvas Workspace tutorial from about two weeks ago. 
So not only can you use your scan and cut for all these little pieces and for this, but then you can take embossing folders. And so what I did here is I took an embossing folder called the gingham embossing folder and I took the piece of petal pink and I embossed it. Then I glued the rays on it. So I thought that came out cool. That was just a little experimentation I tried. I was like, well, wow, how could I step this up even more? It's kind of plain. So I can, you can emboss the background. Now you got like sort of a cool looking sky, you know, with rays of sunshine. Now, there's the inside of that. Now remember the tutorial I did about a week ago? It could maybe longer. Remember I showed you how to make your own sentiments, your own shapes? If not, uh, it's gonna be, it's called Creating Shapes for Sentiments. The tutorial is called Creating Shapes for Sentiments. I showed you how to fuse or weld. I don't wanna say fuse, I don't wanna use the right terminology. I showed you how to weld shapes, how to take a rectangle and weld it to an oval and make your own sentiments. Now this one's made with a die, you can see the stitching. This one's made with a metal die. This sentiment here is made with the scan and cut. Okay, so I just wanted to show you that you can take the same shape. I didn't change those shapes, just so you know. So if you go back to that tutorial and you cut out a bunch of these shapes, it will fit the hip hip hooray perfectly. And I forget the size of the shapes right now because it was a different tutorial and I wrote the comment, you know, I wrote the size of that, but hip hip hooray, coastal uh, calypso coral, and Pacific Point I stamped in with the little sea life dies, and that's what you can get for you to make a birthday card, okay, with all coordinating colors. And just to kind of show you what else we did in that tutorial, there's another hip hip hooray that I didn't ink up the edges. This one I inked up the daffodil delight around it. So in that tutorial, I showed you how to weld a couple different shapes to get this kind of effect. You could do the hip hip hooray in that other shape, and I showed you how to create this effect with the with the rounded rectangle. So these were these were all done with the scan and cut. This, this, and this are all done with the scan and cut. But this one is stitched. Now the scan and cut does do stitching, but not a good job. So metal dies do a better job of stitching. And I like having metal dies because I, I fill my bucket of crafty goodness with lots of things for sentiments. But I also love being able to make any size sentiment I want with the scan and cut. So that is how my last two tutorials relate to this current tutorial. My last two scan and cut tutorials, not my last two tutorials. That is how this is relating, is because this is all the same stamp set, good feelings. But it's, it's how you can take other elements. So I hope you enjoyed all these projects. And I hope you will give these a try with whichever stamp set you may have. You don't need to have the exact ones I have. And we will end with saying hello and opening the candy boxes. Because I know you want to know what's inside the candy boxes. And I want to as well, because even though it's only been a day, I kind of forget what I put inside all these. So I, I remember that this one's robin eggs. So it's Easter and you want those to shake. So for this one, I'm going to pull the ribbon off like this so I don't have to tie the, tie the bow again. That's a nice little trick. And we, I was just doing little boxes of sunshine. So we have ginger chews, some ginger candy. I was just going for the colors, making it nice, shiny, sunshiny colors. So mini Mentos orange flavor. Some little Dove chocolates with flowers on them. These are the spring Dove chocolates. Uh, some little chai tea and a little lemon Mentos candy. Okay, so that's what's inside this one. With some grass. All right, now let's see what's inside this one. This one, I didn't put a ribbon around the outside. I just put ribbons underneath there so it would be easy to open. Okay, we have some more fun colors. Okay, so we have Bigelow Cozy Chamomile Herbal Tea. Caffeine free, so it's the little yellow. I was going for that yellow color again, yellow and orange. Ginger chews. Oh, I want to eat this right now, guys. Sorry, whoever's going to get that, not getting to get this one in their box. I'm addicted to caramels, I can't tell you. That was the Werther's original caramel. Can't help it. Okay, too many Mentos and two Dove chocolates. I'll replace it. I'll put another caramel back in there. All right, let's see what's in this one. Oh, yeah. This one's fun. I forgot about this. Diana, you can get the mini Mentos from different stores. I'll try to link to them. My sister sent me those, but I'll try to link to where you can get them. So this is a sticky note. I have a sticky note pad with emojis on it. And one of them's wearing sunglasses, so I put a little sticky note in there just for your little box of sunshine. And I, this one, I did a seahorse. I was using my stencil, but it did kind of rub off because... This, these little notepads I got from Hobby Lobby, right? But um, when I tried to use the stencil on it, 
it, it, it rubbed off the gold part, which is fine because the gold part is more shiny and it stuck to the white part. So then I had to get like a paper towel and sort of wipe it off. But I put the little seahorse on there. And it's just a little notepad from Hobby Lobby that I decorated with some sun rays and the little seahorse from... All right, I don't remember where I got these little... I think Hobby Lobby again. My little pineapple clips. I like to put these in boxes of sunshine. I had these put away since last season. But I like to put these in boxes of sunshine. Okay, a bunny lollipop. Let's see what kind of bunny it is. Dum Dum's bunny lollipop with yellow. So anyway, try to find yellow things. I even have a yellow pen that's super cute. That he wouldn't fit in it wouldn't fit in here because the pen was too big, but another T. Alright, so you get the idea of things you can put in your cute little boxes. So that is all for now. Send some sunshine. You gotta know people that need sunshine in their lives that you can send them boxes of sunshine. Make them feel good. And that's what these are for. Think of giving these to a nursing home. Think of making lots of these. Get these on clearance. For $2 and something, something, you get a whole package of these gold ones. You fold them up. You could, you could give these out to like a whole assisted living facility. Of course, you're gonna have to ask them, am I allowed to give them tea, candy, um, or even if you, if you want, maybe, Ask them what you're allowed to put in them because sometimes, you know, dietary restrictions, they might say, oh, you can only put in um, sugar-free lifesavers or something. I mean, you might have like a limit of what you can put in it, but a note would be nice. Then if you can't put much in it because of dietary restrictions, you could put, always put a note three by three because this is three and a half inches. You make it three by three notes and put that in there. All right. I am way on time. I'm happy that I ended ahead of schedule. You never know. I always schedule myself an hour and it's only 51 minutes because sometimes I have technical difficulties. I'm just putting everything back together. I'll take some pictures of these and post them so you get a better idea. Yep. So, Gloria, you love chocolate covered caramel too. They're just so good. Those dove dove chocolates with caramels inside are good. They're just little pieces of heaven. Thank you, Denise. Thank you, Diana. Okay, 72, so she's working on, Diane's working on 72 cards for nursing homes, nursing home right now. So that's good because what you could do, and that's so sweet of you, is you could do sending sunshine and good feelings your way, or this kind of sentiment like that. And then the next quarter you do it, or the next month you do it, you pick a different sentiment and you give them something, you know, to look forward to. So a lot of my team members do that. One of them works at assisted living facility and one of them preaches out of the assisted living facility. Another one has Show Mercy craft, Crafting, which she gives to nursing facilities. So, I mean, my team members are very into doing stuff for charity like that, too, as well. And they make, like, mass-produced things. So I'm very proud of them. Yep. Well, you can do, yeah, Maria, you can do point, you can't go point 10, you can go point 12, because it goes by point zero four inches. So, yeah, keep on making more layers. Sometimes I make four and five layers. For my sentiment, so you can make one that's 0 0.12, 0 0.16. So keep on going out, 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 as big as you want. But it has to go in by 0 0.04 increments for whatever reason. This one I think looks really good like that. That's only 0 0.04. And then 0 0.08. But then sometimes it doesn't look like it's this big. It just depends on what you put it on. All right, I don't see any questions, so I'm going to sign off now. Thank you all for watching. This is the Paper Chef. I appreciate you coming today. Have fun with your playing with your scanning cuts.